hey, you probably come across this amplifier while looking for some online. It truly does look like those ones from in your car back in the day, but it isn't. You can plug it in right at home so you can listen to your home speakers. And at just $18, I decided to go ahead and give it a shot to see if I can recommend it for anyone that needs to plug in these passive speakers. Maybe their stereo doesn't work anymore, but the speakers themselves may still work just fine. Now, if you're watching this, you may be brand new to amplifiers as a whole. So not only will we do a sound test, we'll also go over the parts of the amplifier and how to set it up. Here on Simple Cafe Sound, illustrated tutorials, short and sweet. All right, comes with some screws and tape in case you want to mount it somewhere. Cool and your standard diagram which shows all the parts of the device but i'll be going over them myself in this video so just stay tuned now the great reveal itself the actual amplifier okay feels a little light which isn't necessarily a bad thing it still feels pretty durable just a quick side note is that i ordered the version with the power supply and as you notice it didn't come with one it looks like they sent me the one down here, which is cheaper because it comes without a power supply. Now, luckily I had a spare of the exact power supply so I could at least test it just for now. All right, back to the build quality. The dials feel pretty smooth. There's some resistance there, which will help me more fine tune my bass and treble, which I really appreciate being able to do. Now, the casing itself feels pretty metallic, not very heavy though, maybe it's aluminum. And as for the power button, not bad, feels pretty springy, that's good. And now let's finally turn it around to look at the actual connections. These are called speaker terminals and it's where you're gonna plug in your speakers. Many passive speakers already come with this cable pre-attached, but if you don't have some of this cable, you can order some from the link in the description. FYI, the cables don't have to be red and black, just different colors. One pair of red and black terminals are for one speaker, which could be left, and the other one for right, giving you a stereo effect. And this is where you're gonna plug it in for power. It doesn't have an internal battery, so it's gotta always be plugged in to work. The last part to look at are these ports here on the far left called audio in. That's where we're gonna put our audio source in through. These are known as RCA connectors and you can use an RCA cable or if you need an aux to RCA cable to connect just about anything like a TV so you can have external TV speakers, which would put you pretty close to a home theater experience. But for this test, we're just gonna go ahead and use a cell phone. Let's go ahead and get that set up. Here's a basic diagram of what we're connecting. And looking at the back is where we can see everything that's actually plugged in. We'll begin by connecting our audio source. We'll do so with an RCA to aux cable. <clears throat> Mini amplifier, two channels. Only 18 watts, I believe. We'll feed our audio through RCA. <clears throat> to my phone. Okay, that's there ready. But this needs power. Yeah, our amp has our audio feed now, but now it's going to need some electricity to be able to pump out that volume. Power's in. Okay, good. Turns on. Awesome, now that our amp has the power to amplify that signal coming from our cell phone, we can now send that audio out through our loudspeakers. Let's do that as our final step, and then we can do the sound test. If you're completely new to SpeakerWire, check out this video right up here. It has some three pretty useful pro tips for you. Here I have my speakers right next to each other for display purposes, but depending on how long your speaker wire is, I highly recommend putting them on different sides of the room so you can really hear that stereo effect. It's pretty cool. If you need to, you can always use more speaker wire to extend your length. Okay, everything checks out. It's all connected. Now it's just a matter of are we satisfied with our amplifier? But to be fair, the speakers are gonna matter too. That's why I went out and got another pair because the ones that I was going to use, these here, were actually outside of the ohm range that this amplifier was made for. See that 12 with the omega symbol? That means that the speaker is 12 ohms and it'll work best with an amplifier that's about the same. 
This one, however, we can see is from 2 to 8. So to be fair to the amplifier and try to get the best results, I went out and found a pair of speakers that were within the proper ohm range that the amplifier was actually designed to work with. Now, if this is throwing you off or scaring you, I understand. But here's what it all comes down to to keep your equipment safe. The number of ohms in your speaker must be the same or higher than the number of ohms in your amplifier. All right, try to burn that into your memory or take a couple screenshots if that helps. Anyway, these speakers were only 1350. Pretty good deal. Now let's see what it sounds like all put together. Volume is all the way up on my phone. That's 50%, 75, 100. So that's as loud as it gets. Of course, it depends on your song. Let's put up the bass, see if we hear a difference. That is the bass, right? Yeah. Yep, more bass, that's full bass. Turns out this is a very decent amp. I do recommend it if you're new to these and if you don't care too much about power. This has 18 watts after all, and it's enough to fill a room, but if you want lots of power really loud, you may want to go above 50 watts. Check out this video I made to clear up some confusion you may still have about stereo amplifier receivers. Then that way you can make the best choice for your home entertainment sound system. You can support by liking, sharing, or subscribing or even with this link right up here. Cheers and I hope you get connected.